Hello everyone, my name is Arusha McKenzie and I am from UWE. I'm the project officer on the Wage and Employment Dynamics team and today I'll be presenting alongside one of my colleagues, Damien Wittard, who's also from UWE, and we'll be discussing with you different ways of looking at data. Now, for the WED project, the annual survey of household earnings, more commonly known as the ASH, is the primary data source that we'll be using. It is our survey of choice because its characteristics allow us to have an in-depth look at what the wages and earnings are of persons working in and around the UK. Between 1997 and 2003, this survey did go through an go through an implementation period. And then from 2004, it was used exclusively when it replaced the new earnings survey, the NES, that had been used since the 1970s. The ASH is representative of 1% of the UK working population, and it's collected around Easter time each year from employers. There is a great deal of information that exists on the ASH and we have decided to take a very structured approach to our documentation. Now this will include presenting thorough explanations and adding whatever findings we have come across um, to add to the guidance and methodology of the ASH. We expect to provide the necessary amendments or accompanying notes to measurements, information and lookup tables and we'll be working alongside ONS to update user guides appropriately. We'll also take part in a collaborative effort with the repository and preservation team of the UK Data Archive um, for when the web project itself will need to be stored. And alongside descriptive statistics, we also do aim to present detailed descriptions of all main variables and any derived variables. Because as you can see from this next slide, the ASHI main variables allow for a lot of derivations that only enhance the scope of the analyses that we're able to complete. For these reasons, we know that the ASH provides a level of richness that allows us to look at different things like even occupations within industries. And we can also make comparisons such as full-time versus part-time employees and what occurs within the public versus the private sector. And there's also the ability to hone in on other characteristics such as what will happen within particular age groups, particular regions, and for different genders of the UK labor market. One of the advantages of the ASH is that it currently provides one of the UK's largest sample sizes of employees to carry out such work. And that currently sits at about 300,000 persons. The ASH can track individuals longitudinally, so we know what occurs over time. And it's also said to have a high response rate. One of the key features of the ASH as well, which will be evident through the work of the web team, is its ability to link to other data sets. And my colleagues, John Forth from City and Van Fan from UWE, would have discussed that further in another session about the census. And my colleague, Damien Wittard, would look at its interaction with the business structure database. So it is evident that the the ASH comes with its own advantages, and it can be seen where Daphne is quoted with enthusiasm, showing how the various aspects of obtaining wage and earnings data for the UK population is enhanced by using the ASH. This is not to say, though, that the ASH is without its issues. But if each of these are looked at and rec rectified, then we expect that there is lots to gain from it. We know that the ASH is based off the HMRC PAYE data, so it automatically excludes the self-employed cohorts of the working UK population. We know that it does not provide a high level of personal characteristics 
and there is evidence that data is missing or has been duplicated for a number of persons. And we are doing work so far that has revealed that about 20% of the variables within the ASH would need their definitions rectified or in fact included. We have discovered that the dates on which the survey is issued each year is not consistent, as this is done to really accommodate the Easter period. So sometimes this happens before or sometimes this happens after the holiday period. And as you may know, with other survey tools, the wait time can be lengthy to have these returned with the ASH. As all jobs aren't listed on the PAYE system, the ASH is prohibited from including every job in the workforce within its analyses. It is also worth noting that in 2007, while the automatic occupation coding and special arrangements were being implemented, there was a 20% reduction in the sample size used. Now, this was compared to the sample size of 2005, which was reduced by 20% also, and it was seen where no difference was made to the end results. And even though no difference was made to that, um, to the results and the findings, it is, however, important to note this um, for documentation and research purposes to make sure that they are added to the ASHI knowledge base. And as you can see, the amendments that have been made to the ASH and the work around it requires extensive data cleaning and thorough documentation. So what does the web model look like for approaching this type of research? Well, we've gathered all our source documentation with our primary sources being the ONS, the UK Data Archive, and we have had significant inputs from our academic and government stakeholder groups where we have been pointed in the direction of key literature. And at the end of this, we will also be sharing our end user documentation openly, and we will endeavor to make sure that it also sits on the Wage Dynamics website. We will be taking a transparent approach to all our quality assurance checks. And for each issue that we identify, we'll be approaching it systematically. So it will be documented and what we have done will also be noted so that this, pro this process is something that's widely shared and understood with our audience. My colleague Damien Wittard will now talk you through an example illustrating how aspects I have so far touched on and while providing a practical example, we'll pull together various stages of our work for you. Thank you. Thank you, Arusha. I'm Damien Wittard and I'm a senior lecturer from the University of the West of England working on the Wage and Employment Dynamics project and I will talk you through this potential problem we identified with the annual survey of hours and earnings. The identification of the problem came about after an informal discussion between the Office for National Statistics, Northern Ireland Statistics and Research Agency and the web team. From the discussions, analysts from Northern Ireland expressed some concerns as to the accuracy of the work location variable in ASH. For ONS who produce aggregate figures, this had less importance, but for the researchers working on spatial and commuting types of analysis, this could be very important. Therefore, we began looking into the potential problem. The potential problem arose because ASH forms are sent to employers with the employee's work address already pre-filled. Individuals are matched to enterprises through HMRC's PAYE data. This means that the enterprise's address in this data set is the registered address for the company's PAYE scheme. Generally, companies will have only one PAYE scheme, which is usually administered from their head office. This means that potentially there could be some bias in the employee's uh, workplace address. However, this is partially offset as ONS provides the facility for certain large firms to send an electronic submission, which is updated in company records. In terms of bias, we do not expect there to be any in single site firms as there is only one site. We also expect any bias from multi site firms with special arrangements to be limited. However, we expect to find evidence of bias with multi-site firms with standard paper submissions and that this will potentially be greater for large employees who have the potential to have more employees in the ASH sample. 
We also expect the bias to be greater for enterprises with greater numbers of multi-sites that are, as administratively it is more burdensome to ensure that employee has the correct workplace address. In order to explore this issue, we took a three-step approach. Firstly, we compared the proportion of head office employment to the business structure database. The BSD contains a small number of variables such as employment, turnover and census type per area for almost all business organisations in the UK. The BSD is derived primarily from the interdepartmental business register. The three main data sources are value added tax, pay as you earn, uh, records from HMRC and ONS business surveys. As such, in our analysis, we believe that this was a good benchmark from which to analyse the ASH. Second, we're going to look at the difference between different groups in ASH. There are single site and multi site employers using standard paper submissions or special arrangement, that is the electronic submission. And thirdly, we ran some basic regressions on the probability of working at the head office. And in particular, we were interested in the effect of controlling special arrangements. We were unable to test for this bias directly as there was no further information in relation to the question in ASH. Therefore, in order to look at this issue, we matched to a number of other data sources. The ASH annual data sets were directly linked with Eastings and Northings, which gave us a geographic point from which to calculate the straight line difference in metres between the employee's home address and the recorded work address in ASH. In terms of the BSD, we matched to two versions. At the level of enterprise reference, and we used this for the head office marker, we also needed a geographic marker, but it wasn't appropriate to use the postcode as that was restricted to just the first four digits. Therefore, we used the census output area. At the local unit level, however, the ASH and BSD local unit references did not match. To resolve this, we created a proxy local unit reference that was compatible between the two data sets. To do this, we used the census output area. The data sets were then merged with the combined BSD data set using the NREF and the COA variables. The combined data set enabled comparisons to be made between the ASH and the BSD data sources. In this analysis, we are directly comparing the data in the ASH and the BSD, and in particular, focusing on the proportion who are employed in the head office. We also break the analysis down to look at the difference between single site and multi site. We note that the proportion of people working in the head office is similar for both single site and multi site. If there were to be evidence of some bias, we would expect a higher percentage to be employed in the head office and ASH. However, we do not find this. We then focus just on the ASH sample to see if there's any difference between the proportion working in the head office. And we looked at this information by size of employer for four groups, single site and multi site with standard paper submissions, column one and two, and single site and multi site with special arrangements, electronic submissions, columns three and four. As expected, we see 100% of employees of single sites working at HQ. However, there is a notable difference between the proportion of employees recorded as working at the head office for multi-site enterprises, depending on type of arrangements. Those making paper submissions consistently record higher proportions of employees working at the head office for all size bands. In further support of evidence of some bias in the data, we also note that the difference in proportions increases as the size of organisations increases. For example, the difference from medium sized companies is around one and a half percentage points, whereas this grows to 10 percentage points for large and extra large companies before peaking at 20 percentage points for the largest companies with over 10,000 employees. It is worth noting a word of caution here with the direct interpretation as there are only a limited number of observations for medium and large companies, 132 and 682 respectively. However, even focusing on the two largest categories, which has tens of thousands of observations, we believe that there is clear evidence of potential bias. Still just within ASH, we then looked at the distance that employees lived from their work. We broke this down by living and working in the same geographic zone, as we wanted to concentrate on those that lived and worked in different geographic zones, the results of which are reported in column one. The distance are reported in metres and broken down across the distribution, mean, median, bottom 10 decile and top 10 decile. Again, we look at the four categories of single site and multi site broken down by standard paper submission and special electronic submission. The results reveal that single site, regardless of submission type, and multi site electric submissions reveal very similar estimates 
of living between 40 and 45 kilometres from their place of work. However, the results of a multi-site paper submissions revealed that employees on average live approximately 25 kilometres further away, nearly 68 kilometres. Therefore, if they commuted daily, this group on average would travel an additional 500 kilometres per day, sorry, 50 kilometres per day. When we look at the distribution, it revealed that the top 10 decile group lived 100 kilometres further away. We looked at this by further breaking down the analysis by size of company uh, in terms of employees and number of units. The results, we, which aren't reported here, but I can report, show that the difference was greater the more the company employed and the more local units each enterprise had. We then carried out some basic regressions on the predictive probability of working in the head office. The dependent variable was the percentage share of head office employment on ASH compared to the percentage share of employment in the BSD. We looked at this across all size bands and then for the model as a whole in column six, um, which is size zero to nine employees being the admitted category. Excluding model five due to its low level of observation, all regression coefficients recorded the strong positive relationship between the proportion of head office employment in BSD and ASH approximately about 0.8. This means that every time the proportion of head office employment doubles in the BSD, the proportion of head office employment in the ASH goes up by 80%. We are really interested in the effect for controlling for special arrangements, i.e. electronic submissions. It is generally negative throughout and statistically significant at the 10% level for size 4 enterprises employing between 1,000 and 9,999 employees, and in model 5 for the very largest employees, enterprises employing over 10,000. And also in model 6, the overall model is, is significant at the 1% level. Controlling for special arrangements which is introduced in Model 2, shifts the intercept downwards. This suggests that when special arrangements are in place in ASH, we see a relatively lower percentage employed at the head office. This is further evidence in support of the potential bias in the data set. To conclude, this case study has shown us a number of different things. I think the first thing that it's shown us is that working in partnership is very beneficial. Um, researchers working in line alongside national statistical institutes who are primarily focused on aggregate statistics allows us to analyze and understand the data at a much lower level. I think researchers are particularly well placed to sort of take this work as they know what to look for and they're able to record the analytical bias in a systematic and documented fashion. Um, the results of this project are ongoing but in particular it's going to lead to uh, new documentation which will be helpful to the research community, um, a couple of new um, date variables in the data set, but also we'll be able to uh, put markers in the data set as to the potential uh, validity of different um, observations depending on the type of analysis that you might be using. In particular here we're thinking about sort of spatial and commuting type analysis. Thank you.